All right. Okay, so today we have a lot of bottles out on the counter. Uh, the reason for that is that all of these products are kind of more or less related. Um, we're going to start a segment here, probably going to take two or three short videos to get through it all about amino acids, their benefits of plants. Um, these here are your amino acid supplements. You got Vitamino by Botanicare, Amino Treatment by House and Garden, Amino Aid, Trinity Catalyst, both by Aurora Innovations. Um, these are your enzymatic products. Uh, but Excel Multizyme by House and Garden, Hygrozyme, um, Synthesyme by Advanced Nutrients, and these are your bacterial products. Uh, this one by Aurora, uh, The Organism, uh, Great White by Plant Success. Um, okay, uh, first let's start by going over a brief overview. What are amino acids um, and how do they work? Okay, amino acids are the basic building blocks for proteins, uh, DNA, RNA, it's what makes you, you, me, me, and our plants, our plants. Um, so that being said, uh, the reason that these are all related is because amino acids cannot directly be uptaken by a plant's root system. They have to be acted on by some type of an enzyme or bacteria which digests them with their enzymes and then puts them into a plant usable form. Okay, there are two types of amino acids. There are L and there are D amino acids. Uh, to understand the difference there, I kind of have to go into a little bit of chemistry. Um, gonna go a little Breaking Bad on you. Please don't fall asleep like Walter White students did. But L amino acids and D amino acids have a chiral relationship where they're stereoisomers of one another. Uh, that means that they are mirrored images similar to your hands. That's what chiral means is hand-like in Greek. Um, so basically these two molecules are identical uh, as far as their chemical makeup. Uh, however, they are slightly opposite from one another so they cannot be superimposed. It's more of an issue like this. So the, what we're going to be focusing on here today or for this segment um, are the L-amino acids. Um, D amino acids are not used by mammalian life, they're not used by plant life. Uh, L amino acids, um, L amino acids are. Uh, D amino acids are pri uh, primarily found, um, not that they're not, I'm gonna have to edit that one, man. <laughs> okay, um, the D amino acids, not that they have no use in agriculture whatsoever. Uh, they're commonly found in um, the protein envelope in bacteria and in antibiotics. Um, they, uh, the reason proteins are, the reason that bacteria generate those types of L amino acids in their protein structures um, are the fact that they are not digestible by normal means. Uh, so it forms a protective layer in the harsh environment they live in, whether that be your soil, your gut, whatever. Okay, so it's not that they're good, it's not that they're bad, and to kind of illustrate that, I'm going to take a look at a couple of stereoisomers that are not uh, plant-related, but rather uh, related to the medical field. A um, couple of different drugs, thalidomide, naproxen, um, ethambutol. Uh, ethambutol uh, is a drug that they commonly use for treating tuberculosis. Uh, it's stereoisomer, or right-handed version, uh, will cause blindness and death. Um, thalidomide, it's commonly used for controlling morning sickness in pregnant women. However, its right-handed isomer uh, can cause gross, malform gross uh, malformations, birth defects. Um, naproxen, commonly used analgesic, uh, prescribed by doctors uh, in the military, we call it sports candy. Um, the right-handed isomer of that uh, will cause liver failure and death. So. Basically what you're seeing is you've got these two identical chemicals that can't be superimposed on each other which have very drastically different effects uh, in the plant and in the way that they are used in nature. Okay, with all that having been said, um, let's take a look at uh, some specific um, L amino acids and what they do, um, how they're reacted on in the plant, um, what their function is. Uh, we'll start with um, L-proline. Um, L-proline uh, is debatably the most important uh, amino acid um, in 
for use in agriculture. Uh, plant tissue out of the 21 important amino acids or important L amino acids, um, proline actually makes up about 17% of all plant cells. Uh, L proline um, is enzymatically acted on by the enzyme uh, proline hydroxylase uh, to form hydroxyproline. Um, hydroxyproline is the chemical in plants that um, directly affects cell elongation, uh, drought tolerance, and turgor pressure in dry environments. Um, so you can see now why aminos are important. Um, plants do have a certain ability to generate aminos uh, within their own tissues just based on you giving them the proper you know NPK and the macro and the micronutrients however to have free L amino acids in your soil uh, greatly increases your microbial herd um, and it gives the plant that extra oomph it's it's basically feeding it something that it can generate itself it's kind of almost gluttonous uh, but it makes a huge difference uh, the next one we'll discuss is L-tryptophan. Um, L-tryptophan, uh, you hear about it every Thanksgiving. It's the same uh, amino acid that's in turkey that causes fatigue in human beings. Um, in plants though, it uh, is very, very important. It does, it does just the opposite in plants that it does in humans. Um, L-tryptophan uh, is chemically similar um, to uh, indoleacetic acid and is in fact uh, one of the precursors um, that is required for a plant's production of endolacetic acid, which is the primary growth hormone in plants. Um, Pseudomonas is the bacteria that commonly uh, digests um, or enzymatically digests tryptophan and allows it to convert into endolacetic acid, which is where this product comes in or these two products come in. You have uh, Pseudomonas bacteria in both of these. <coughs> uh, so now we're starting to see the relation here. Um, the, uh, the use of amino acids, uh, you've got to be careful with it. Um, because of the way that they are enzymatically digested by plants, or en enzymatically processed by plants. You know, certain, uh, if, if you have too much L-tryptophan during your flowering phase, it can actually prevent the development of flowers because the endolacetic acid which it produces does not shut down so the plant never stops growing. It also gives you loose flowers, uh, poorly formed uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, so uh, that's it for today. I think we'll go into uh, a little bit more of the specifics on enzymatic uh, processing of amino acids bacterial digestion of amino acids in our next segment.